Hello everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So thanks for bearing with us. It's been a few weeks since we've been building. You may have seen another video that we posted. We were working on the condition inspection on the RV9. Uh, there's an annual condition inspection that we have to do and uh, it took us about two weeks because there was a good bit of work there. Uh, you should watch that video, lots of good details there. So we are sealing up the fuel tanks. Um, there's a lot of steps here. You'll notice we're working on a number of ribs. A number of ribs need to have holes cut in them or holes uh, cut out of them, <laughs> covered, um, holes sealed up. Um, there's some tooling holes in some of the ribs that we need to close up. And there's some extra holes we have to make. I'm doing a return fuel system on this one, um, just in case we decide to use a um, fuel system uh, that requires return fuel. So there's an extra hole in there and there's extra holes in ribs and extra plumbing and things like that that we're putting in just in case. Um, one thing that we noticed right away on these fuel tanks is they are so much bigger than the, everything about this RV-10 is so much bigger than the 9. Um, the fuel tanks on the 9 have an 18 gallon capacity per side. These are 30 gallons per side. So they're not just wider, they're also longer. So you'll you'll notice uh, we're working on these stiffeners right now. All those Clecos are stiffeners. There's two sets of stiffeners that go all along the bottom of the tank. And then there's the um, big stiffener uh, channel that goes along the, the top of the tank as well. And then there's some extras and, and other things like that. So lots of fiddly bits, lots of things that need to be uh, Pro sealed in place and then riveted and then cleaned up and um, each rivet uh, for for that that gets uh, done in this tank takes easily five times as long as a regular rivet um, because what we do is so first we wipe you know we we select the rivet <laughs> um, make sure it's the right size uh, which is normal for all of them. And then you have to dip it in Pro Seal. So you get a little bit of Pro Seal on the rivet, you put it in the hole, and then you have to wipe it down so that when you're hitting it with the bucking gun, the rivet doesn't sit proud so that it's nice and flush. So we do that, that's a little bit of extra work. And then you do it once to, to start setting it because it's really slippery, so it has a tendency to, to fold. Um, so you start setting it to get it just right, and then you stop, you wipe it down again, you check it, and then you do it, and uh, and you're set. And then after that, when you're done with all of the rivets, you go back, and from the inside, you put Pro Seal on top of the shop head of the rivet so that there's no opportunity for any leaks in there. So lots of steps per rivet, takes forever. <laughs> um, so while I was yapping, we put the, the ribs in there, and you may have noticed that we spread Pro Seal all over the, the surface that the rib contacts the inside of the tank. Um, again, to, to see, make sure there's nowhere that the fuel can leak from. Um, and then, you know, as, as you can see us doing, we rivet it, same process, right, very carefully, make sure the, the rivet gets a little bit of Pro Seal, gets wiped, etc., etc., etc. So it's a, a fairly tedious, time-consuming job. Um, a lot of people get freaked out by the messiness of Pro Seal. Um, we don't. Like, I wear long sleeves. It's really hot in there. Um, but I wear long sleeves because I don't want the, the Pro Seal on my skin and my arms are in there. Um, and you can notice this shirt has Pro Seal all over it. There's, like, little specks. If you pause, you can notice on my sleeves there's little specks of Pro Seal. Um, Etc. So we made some good progress here. Um, this tank, this is the right tank, is uh, the, the ribs are fully riveted um, and it's pretty much ready for plumbing. So there's uh, one, two plumbing lines that go in there. One of them is for the breather. Um, so it's basically a vent that goes all the way across the inside of the line. And then there's also one for the return fuel, because I don't want to return fuel into that first bay. I'm actually returning it into the third bay, just to make sure that the fuel has as much time as possible to sort of heat exchange with the rest of the fuel before getting sucked back in. Um, definitely not necessary by any means, but if we decide to do the Jet-A fuel, a lot of the uh, Jet-A um, options out there use fuel for for a big part of their cooling so it's a good idea to keep that to do everything we can to keep the fuel cool but anyway yeah lots of progress um 
And uh, we continue this coming week. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll talk soon.